<laughs> all right, so anyway, all right, here we go. Congruence. Page 127 is where we're going to talk about congruence here, okay? I know we've been using the word congruence, but now we're going to look at it more closely in the context of transformations, okay? So we're going to use transformations to kind of bridge the gap, okay, into our new unit here that we're going to talk about. So if you look here, we're just going to kind of talk through about, about how can you determine whether two figures are congruent, okay? So how can we really like say, okay, we know these th two things are congruent, all right? So let's look at our first example here. So the de definition of congruence is right here. Two plane figures. Now, the word plane here, all right, that's not plane as in like, you know, sometimes you get strawberry flavored, sometimes you get, you know, like blueberry flavored and there's like plane flavored stuff, right? That's not the same plane here. This plane is like the two-dimensional plane, right? That's like a coordinate plane right there. It's two-dimensional space or area if you want to talk about, okay? So two figures, two plane figures are congruent if and only if one can be obtained from the other by a sequence of rigid motions. That is, by a sequence of reflections, translations, and or rotations, okay? So, for an example here, a landscape architect uses a grid to design the landscape around a mall. Use tracing paper to confirm that the landscape elements are congruent here. All right, so if you guys want to really use patty paper, you can there. Um, in fact, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Does anyone need patty paper here? So we can get that. Uh, so you can kind of see it here. All right, get a piece of patty paper. So it says trace planter A, B, C, D. So we're going to do that. I'm going to put some points there. Should we hang on to the wall? Yes, please, if you would. You can add it to your geometry scra scrapbook later. So I should really use a straight edge here, but I'm just going to go ahead and freehand it, okay? I'm just going to freehand it, okay? So we're going to trace that shape A, B, C, D. Okay, and so this, this shape is, is kind of describing like a planter. So the idea is that it's kind of like a top-down view, right, of what a, a planter might look like, something that you, you know, put plants in or flowers in or something like that, okay? The landscape architect here is coming up in there. And believe it, believe it or not, landscape architecture is an actual, like, job and field. You can get like a college degree in landscape architecture. So school I went to, University of Maryland, they have a landscape architecture degree. They like a lot of money on it. There you go, that's you right. Got mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I can imagine, yeah. yeah. Alright. So we trace planner A B C D and then we want to describe a transformation that we can use to move the tracing paper so that the planter A B C D is mapped onto planter E F G. So how can we how can we do that? So slide it, okay, translate it, right? Maybe use an R. How do we translate it though, Alex? Oh, down four, so let's let's see what Dorian says. So down two, three, and then you said right how right four? One, two, three, and four. There it is. Perfect. Great job. Okay. So we can translate Oh, I should put this in the well. Okay, translate uh, down four and write for. Okay. In coordinate notation, by the way, do you remember what that means? If we take x, y, arrow, and then what should I put for my coordinates here? If I want to, if I want to go right for from x, that means I need to do x what? Plus. Yeah, plus four. You're going to add four to the x one. If I want to go down four, that means I need to take y and do y. Yeah, minus because you know down we kind of go in a negative direction. So there's the coordinate notation there. Okay. So, what does that then, because we can translate this to map exactly onto this, what does that kind of like confirm about these two shapes? They are congruent. Exactly right. Okay. I just want to make sure I get the correct words here. Okay. So that means the planters are, I'm going to use the symbol for congruent. <coughs> Like that, okay? The planters are congruent because 
they can be mapped onto each other by rigid transformations. Okay. All right, cool. So exactly right. And Dorian described that transformation exactly right. He's got to go down four and then right four. Okay. Questions on any of that? <laughs> so that's why I can show two things are being congruent there. Now, next one, letter B. Okay, it says trace trace pools, JKLM and NPQR. So here they want us to trace both pools. So I'm going to trace both. I'm going to scratch out my old work there. And so these are going to be like little pools, I guess, they're going to put in the in a courtyard or something like that. We'll just trace these here. Okay, sometimes people like to have water features in their landscape. So like a pool, yeah. Like for fish or something like that. Or to throw pennies in so they can make some extra money, you know. So trace both. Okay, so here we're tracing both shapes. All right. And then it says to fold the paper so that JKLM is mapped onto pool NPQR. So we're supposed to fold the paper so these two shapes kind of match up. So you can see how I'm getting closer there. I kind of have to like twist it a little bit and then something like that. Okay, so I fold my paper there and they, so they matched up to each other. See that? They match up. Okay, and so then since we were able to fold our paper like that, what kind of transformation? It's a reflection, exactly right. Okay, so we can say something like, um, you know, well, you know, they are reflections of each other, or the pools are reflections of each other. We can't really describe that line of reflection like we normally could, but okay. And so they are congruent because they can be mapped on because they're mapped onto each other by um, rigid transformations. Okay. So again, that's why we spend all that time studying those rigid transformations because it helps us determine whether things are congruent or not. Okay. If we can make a shape match to another shape through a series of translations, rotations, and reflections, then we know those two shapes are congruent. So here, these two, you know, little planters were congruent because we could just translate it down to match it up. Here, if we reflected this shape onto this shape, they were matched up exactly right. So that means you know they're congruent. Here, these two shapes. All right. Are they congruent? Yeah. Yeah, no, they are not, right? And we can, do, we can easily see that. How can we see that here, Eli? Yeah, I mean, if we just, like, trace this just to kind of, like, convince ourselves, right? Okay, if I, like, try and, like, map this big triangle here, I'm going to, like, try and translate it down. I can't quite get it. It looks like the angles are maybe equal, right? But I can't, like, make this thing, even if I turn it or if I reflect it and, like, try and map, oh, that kind of, but, mm, no, not quite. Okay. So, yeah, there is no rigid transformation. Okay. To map triangle LMN on to triangle DEF so they are not what? They're not congruent. Okay, they can't be congruent because the two the two shapes can't be matched up. <coughs> okay. And I don't know, this last question seems kind of like duh to me, but m maybe not. Okay, so how do the sizes of the pairs of figures help determine if they are congruent? That's right, if they're not the same size, they're not congruent, okay? If they're not the same size, 
Bless you. They are not congruent. And there's one of those conditional statements. If they are not the same size, then they are not congruent. Right? Conditional statements. They're all throughout math. Okay. All right. So let's turn the page here then. All right. So that's our basic understanding of congruence here. So we're just going to spend a little bit of time here checking out about how to decide whether figures are congruent or not. Okay. So if we look here at the next page, page 128, we can see okay, that it asks us to use the definition of congruence to decide whether the two figures are congruent, explain your answer. Okay, so it's kind of like that last question on the test, right? So if you look here at these two shapes, right, uh, you can see here's the answer for us. The two figures appear to be the same size and shape, so look for a rigid transformation that will map one to the other. Okay, so what kind of rigid transformation would map one of these to the other one? It's a reflection. Specifically over what? Over the y-axis, exactly right, okay? So, since we can map CDEF onto JKLM by reflecting CDF over the y-axis, that reflection is a rigid motion, so the two figures are congruent. And the coordinate notation for that reflection is xy arrow negative xy, right? Just the change of the x-coordinate to be the opposite. All right? Letter B. Let's see, I'm going to call on someone here. Let's see, let's see. So, mm. All right, let's go to Donovan. What do you say here, Donovan? How can we map... Donovan, you need to give a chance to ask. Give me a second here. I think you can... I think you do know, okay? This shape right here, all right? How can we map this shape to this shape? Any ideas there? Can we translate it? Yep, no, we can't, okay? Can we reflect it to make it map up to there? Can we reflect this shape up to here? You guess? All right. Well, so where would the line of reflection be? All right. If you're not sure, all right, I, I'll, I'll, I won't bother you there, but, but Donovan, make sure you're paying attention here, but okay, I do expect everyone to participate in the class. Uh, Brianna, go ahead. What type of transformation? It's a rotation. Exactly right. It's a rotation, okay? So we can map triangle ABC to XYZ by a rotation. Brianna, can you be more specific? A rotation of how many degrees? Ninety, yeah, it is a ninety degree rotation, and it's ninety degrees. It depends on which one we're talking about. I guess if we're tri if we're mapping triangle ABC to triangle XYZ, that means we're taking this one and going up to here. It's a ninety degree rotation. Which direction? Counterclockwise. So I'm just going to put it CCW there. Yep, good job. Okay, so this is or is not a rigid motion, Brianna. It is. So this is a rigid motion. Okay, this is a rigid motion that maps triangle ABC to XYZ. So the two figures are or are not congruent, Brianna? They are. They are. So again, we'll cross out the are not and are. Okay. <coughs> Being able to describe and stuff like that? I mean, the ideas are there, yes. Y yeah, so describing and stuff like that. Okay, so now the coordinate notation here, and this one might be a little bit tricky, so let's actually write out some points, right? So let's take a point C, for example. Our C has coordinates 2, negative 1, and what does, C trans or what does C transform to be? What coordinate? What point? C transforms up here to be what? Z. Okay, so Z's coordinates are 1, 2. Yeah, you want to see what it is? Uh-huh. Yeah, so careful, not negative y, x. It would be y, because the, so the, oh, wait a minute here, hang on a second. You're right, I apologize, I'm sorry. So yeah, okay, two, uh, sorry, let me write it out this way because it'll be easier for me to see. Okay, so our x coordinate is becoming our y coordinate, so yes, so the x becomes the y coordinate, and then the negative one y coordinate becomes a positive one, so yeah, it's a negative y there. So that's exactly right, Robbie, sorry about that. Mm -hmm. So there's the transformation. Okay, good. All right. So number two then, we're going to just do these two together here. All right, number two, let's go to... All right, well, Robbie, number two. What do you say there? Okay, it's a reflection of each other, so are the two figures going to be congruent? Yeah. yeah, okay, it's a specifically a reflection over the what? Yeah, reflection over the x-axis. Okay, 
So, and I'm going to say, so A, B, C, D is congruent to W, X, Y, Z. Okay. Okay. Because a reflection is a rigid motion transformation. Okay. Thank you. Ooh, it's wet. Okay, so again, there's a reflection over the x-axis. So ABCD is congruent to WXYZ because a reflection is a rigid motion transformation. I'm going to abbreviate the word transformation here. Okay. All right. Last one here we'll do, and then we'll skip on to next, another section here. Okay. So, BJ, how about this one right here? Are these two shapes congruent? Can we get one by, you know, doing a rigid motion? Can we translate or reflect or rotate here to go from this shape to this shape? Yep, it's a reflection. Yep, so another reflection. Now, this reflection, is it a reflection over the y-axis, for example, here, BJ? Yeah, no. This one's a different kind of reflection. Can you can you see what's the what's the line of reflection here? Can you see what that is? Yeah, it's kind of hard to see here. Anyone have an idea? I want to go. So Eric, you go for it. Negative um, three. Yeah, it's y equals negative three. If you look here, the coordinates, okay, they're jumping by twos. Negative two, negative four, negative six, negative eight. So this is like negative two right here, and you can see the reflection line will be right in the middle between negative two and negative four. So it'll be negative three, and so it's going to be x over, whoops, over x equals negative 3. Okay, that line, x equals negative 3. Yeah, go ahead. So, triangle JK L is congruent to triangle now, can I name this other triangle any way I want? When I said triangle JKL here, how do I have to name that other triangle? I said J, K, L. How does the other triangle have to be named? Well, not X, the primes. It's like I'm saying what matches up. Yeah, it's got to be X, Y, Z here because J matches to the X, K matches to the Y, L matches to the Z. Okay, and we'll talk about that here in, the, in a, few, a few minutes after this example. No, I have a question. Okay. So why would it be X instead of Y? So J, you can see that angle J is the one that matches to angle X there, right? Yeah. And so K and Y, those two, those two angles match up. And then L and Z, they match up. So that's why you have to keep it in the same order. We said J, K, L, so it's got to be X, Y, Z. Oh, so like, if it wasn't like, if L and Z was not lined up, it Correct, yeah, you would, you would have a different order, potentially. Mm -hmm. Okay, so again, because, I'm just going to really abbreviate it here, because a reflection, okay, is a rigid motion transformation. Whoop, missed my S. There you go, transformation. Okay. <coughs> Okay, so then sometimes, and I, I just want to quickly look at these here, sometimes we need more than one transformation, okay, to um, be able to um, show that two things are congruent. For example, okay, uh, we, we were told in the definition of congruence that when two figures are known to be congruent, there must be some sequence of rigid motions. All the ones we just looked at over here, they were just a single rigid or single transformation, right? A, rot a reflection, a rotation, a reflection, a reflection, translations earlier. Here we need to be able to look at also combinations as well. Okay? We're not going to spend too much time here because, you know, I don't I don't think we need to necessarily. But for example, this right here, if we look, triangle ABC Right to get it to be triangle QRP. Well, I'll show you here real quick what we have to do. All right, let me kind of scratch out some of my previous work here. If I trans, if I like trace my triangle here ABC. All right, and then there's my center. All right, my origin. What's one thing we need to do here to make this triangle map to this triangle? We're going yeah, to need to rotate it. I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees, actually. 
to right there, and then what do we still have to do? We've got to translate it over one. Okay, you can see right there. So again, it was, if I can not line it back up here, okay, we were right here, right? I rotated 180 degrees, but it doesn't quite match up, right? You see how it's like one unit over, and then I have to translate it right, one unit, and then it matches up, okay? So we had to do a rotation followed by a translation there. But still, can we also reflect? Now, that's a good question. Let me see here. I don't know. We could do two reflections. We could reflect over the x-axis, for example, which would get us to be up to here. And we could reflect it over the y-axis, which would get us to be right to here. And then we still have to translate, though. So reflect, reflect, translate. Yep, absolutely. Okay. I remember we talked about that yesterday, too, or two days ago, maybe. No, it was yesterday. We were going over the review. If you have two reflections that are over intersecting lines, and it's the same thing as a rotation, too. So anyway, there's that idea. All right, we won't spend any more time on that. Let's skip on, okay, to another section here. All right, and I want us to go to page 139. Okay, so page 139. So now we have the idea of congruent figures here. We're going to talk about what it, the corresponding or matching parts. Okay, the corresponding or the matching parts. Okay. So, once we know the two figures are congruent, what can you conclude about two figures that are congruent? All right? So, I'm not going to have us actually do this. It asks us to fold a sheet of paper in half and use a straight edge and draw two triangles and then cut out two identical triangles. That seems kind of silly. Instead, what I want to do is just like talk about how we can match these things up. So, for example here, these two triangles are going to be congruent because they're basically, they were kind of cut out of the same, you know, sheet of paper, just they're doubles of each other, okay? So, segment AB in this triangle, Okay, what does that match to over here in this triangle? So yeah, AB matches to then what segment over here? D, not EF, again, segment, segment AB. So from A to B matches to DE, that's right. Mm -hmm. Okay, what does BC, what does BC match to over here? EF. Okay, uh, let's see here. Call on some other people here. Uh, oh, I need to scoot it up. Sorry, there you go. Uh, Piper, what does AC on our triangle here match up to over here? Yeah. DF, you got it, segment DF, so we'll put a little segment there, good. Uh, let's see here, Jake, what does A, or what does angle A, it's really been angle here, what does angle A match to from this triangle? What does it match over here? Angle D, you got it. Okay, uh, let's see here, how about... Donovan, how about I come back to you here? Angle B in this triangle, what does it match to here? Sorry, okay, so angle B in this triangle, what does it match to here? Sorry? Yep, you're exactly right. Very good. See, angle E. Okay, good. And then, <coughs> Mitchell, how about um, this triangle here? Angle C, what does it match to over here? Angle F. So, Showing that two shapes are congruent is more than just saying the shapes are the same shape, right? We have all these other congruences that are the same. AB is the same as DE. BC is the same as EF. AC is the same as DF. A and D are the same. B and E are the same. C and F are the same. So all their parts are also going to be congruent in this case. All right, let's turn the page here. And so let's look, all right? We have this long phrase, okay, that that is basically the conclusion here. Corresponding parts... Remember we talked about corresponding angles? Corresponding angles were those angles that kind of like matched, right? If I had like parallel lines crossed by a transversal, then like this angle here and this angle here, they're corresponding because they're kind of like matching positions, right? Okay. Corresponding parts of congruent figures are congruent. Okay. Corresponding parts of congruent figures are congruent. So what that means is if two figures are congruent, then corresponding parts are congruent and corresponding angles are congruent. Corresponding sides are congruent and corresponding angles are congruent. So if we say here, for example, that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF and we want to find the given side length or angle measure. So we want to find DE here. So if we look at our picture, okay, if we look over here, here's DE, we want to find the length of DE. What must the length of DE be? What, sorry, what, what is the length of DE? What must that length? 2.6. 2 
That's how you know it has to be 2.6. Yeah, if you look here, in the congruence statement, it even gives it away. There's DE. It's the first two letters. What are the first two letters over here? AB. And that means that AB matches to DE. So yeah, DE is exactly 2.6 centimeters. Okay? What about angle um, B here? So let's look at angle B. Let's go to, let's see, Kwanye. So angle B in this triangle Kwanye, what does that match up to over here? Oh. Is she not here? Where is she? Where is she? Kwanye, why are you at the desk? She's drawing her. Is she okay? Okay. All right. Well, we'll we'll move on here for right now. All right. All right. Addy. All right. Angle B here. Okay. So B is 65 degrees. Exactly right. If you look here, B. Right. It's the middle letter. It matches to E. So angle E here is 65 degrees. Okay, 65 degrees. All right. I'm not going to worry about doing all the fill in the blanks there. It's kind of silly. It's too much. Okay. So let's take a look here at um, some other ones. So why don't you guys go ahead, answer four and five real quick there. Okay. Triangle STU is the triangle VWX. Find the given side length or angle measure. Okay. So go ahead there. Find those measurements. Find SU and find the measure of angle S. Okay. Find S U and the measure angle S. So take two seconds and go ahead and do that. Did we just do B? Yeah, we just did B. It was 65 degrees. 65 degrees. Do we write all the way down the book? Do we write all the way down the book? No, you just that's fine. Yeah. And then go ahead and answer these two questions right here. Just four and five. All right, Courtney, can you try four and five too here? Match up. <coughs> people who sleep. Long days. Here, people. Wait. Did you just get the text? Did you just get the reminder? No, we're coming in. It's must be like eighty degrees. I'm all out. I know, right? I'm all right. I want to have a Okay. Let's go to. Oh no, not here. Not here. Gabe. What do you say there for number four? What you get? Uh, it's forty-three feet. It's forty-three feet. So how do you know that? How do you know the SU match up here to VX? Okay, it looks exactly the same. Good. Remember, you can also use the congruence statement up here, okay, in the picture. So we have SU. SU is the first and last letter. What does that match up to over here? VX, right? First and last letter. So VX is length will also be is 43. So SU should be 43 feet as well by that congruence statement. Very good. Okay, thank you, Gabe. Let's go to Alex for number five. Oh, he just went to the bathroom. <laughs> womp, womp. All right. Uh, let's see here. Nope. All right, let's go to Melissa. Angle S there, Melissa. What do you say? What's that got to be? So look at your congruence statement up here, Melissa. Okay, S, right, is in the first letter there. What does that match up to over here? Yeah, V. So angle S is going to be the same as angle V. So what's angle S's measure? 38 degrees. You got it. That's it. Okay? It's that simple. Okay? Now, of course, you know, it can't always be this easy where you're just, like, matching pieces, right? we got to do some algebra right here. Right, Blake? So, 
explain two, we're going to apply some properties of congruence. Okay? That's okay, Blake. Just want to make sure you're staying awake here. All right? We've got a few sleepers. <coughs> Courtney. She is out like a light. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll make sure she is awake before the bell, though. Okay? So anyway, uh, letter A. We want to find the length. We want to find the length of AB here. Okay? So, again, we're told these two triangles are congruent. So we can use this to help us out. Now, if we look at AB, AB's length is described as 3x plus 8. Huh. How do we find the length of AB if all we're told is this is 3x plus 8? What can we do here? Ideas? Yeah, Debbie? Well, um, Okay, right. AB, AB is going to be the same as DE. DE is listed as 5X. So that means I can say 3X plus 8 must equal 5X. All right. Oh, yeah. I got some That's a lot of <laughs> All right, back on track here. Shh. Listen up here, guys. We're almost done. This will be the last example that we do. Yep. Okay, we'll stop here and then we'll get you guys your assignment. So, Eric, help me out here. We have 3x plus 8 equals 5x. How do we solve this? We did, good. You can find like terms with the five x and the three x. Okay, but since they're on different sides of the equal you, sign. What, what would you like add the smaller one to the bigger one? So yeah, normally I like to get rid of the smaller one. So to get rid of three x we're gonna subtract and we'll subtract three x on this side too. Yep. Shh. Please stop talking. Thank you guys. Divide both sides by 2. That's right. Okay? So x is 4. Okay? So we're done. The answer is 4. AB is equal to 4. No. No. AB's length is not x. What is AB's length? 3x plus 8. So if I only say AB is equal to 4, I am wrong. I did not answer the question. I solved the equation, but that's like an intermediate step. I still have one more thing to do. What do we got to do? Plug 4 in for x. Exactly right. So AB is equal to 3 times 4 plus 8, which is 12 plus 8, which is 20 inches. That's your final answer. Okay? Be very careful. In algebra, we trained you guys so well that once you solve for that equation, you knew you were done, right? Because that's what you do in algebra. You solve an equation, you get the answer, you're done. But when you find that x is 4, you have to plug that 4 back in for the x here, because ab is 3x plus 8. So 3 times 4 is 12, plus 8 gives you 20 inches. Okay? So, for your assignment, here's what I'd like you guys to do, all right? So I'm, we're, since I gave, we went two sections here, I'm, so I'm going to kind of give you an assignment from two different sections, okay? Say so again, this will be homework, yeah, but I want you to work on it now because you have time. So on page 131, I want you to do just do numbers 1 through 5. No coordinate notation. Okay, so don't worry about the coordinate notation. Just, just describe whether they're um, congruent and how you know. Okay, describe the transformation. I'll put a note on it for you there, Tristan, okay? So when you take when you do it home, okay? And then on page so you can tear that page out if you'd like. We have more. Yep. <laughs> and then on page one forty four to one forty five. <laughs> Okay. Uh, 
I want you to do, hmm, I guess, 2 through 12 even. Okay, 2 through 12 even. Okay, so those two assignments there. So go ahead and get started on that.